Howdy, Mundarino, everybody. Welcome back to your latest episode of Hot News. We're going to give you the tech news of the day. There's a lot that's happening this week. A lot. This is probably one of the busiest weeks we've had in tech in quite some time. So we're going to get into that after we talk about the video sponsor for today's episode of Hot News. Hey, friends, today's video sponsor is Datacamp. I don't think I need to tell you viewers of Hot News that the world is constantly changing and the skills you need to succeed in a given career are constantly evolving. And one of the most up and coming needs that is being expressed is the ability to use data. Data analytics is a very important field. And thanks to today's video sponsor, DataCamp, you can actually learn how to be part of that field. So DataCamp's lessons are bite-sized, so you can learn in a way that fits your schedule on any device. It'll track the order of your courses so that you can find out what works for you at a glance. With DataCamp, you can acquire new skills fast with more than 300 courses that combine short expert videos with immediate hands-on keyboard exercises from over 250 different instructors. It's easy to use DataCamp no matter where you are from beginner to expert. You assess your data skill level, then you learn with the interactive courses that they have, and then you apply the new skills with real world projects and daily practice challenges to make sure that you know what's going on. And DataCamp's subscription starts at $25 a month with unlimited access to their courses, both on desktop and mobile. You'll also have unlimited assessment tests that will guide you where to start learning in your new skill. So you can sign up for DataCamp at the link in the video description. You can view the first chapters of each course for free. Again, use the link in the video description and sign up for data camp, get some data skills. It might be good for your career going forward. So I just want to start off with the key few things that are going to impact this week coming up before we get to the headline for today's episode of Hot News, which is a huge, huge monumental shift. NVIDIA officially buying ARM. We'll get to that in a moment, which is Sony's going to have a PS5 event this coming Wednesday, September 16th at 4 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a 40 minute behemoth showcase where we're also expecting that we're going to get the price and release date of these things. If you want to come watch this with us, we'll be live over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Disciple this coming Wednesday so that you can enjoy the live stream with us. And then secondly, it does appear that NVIDIA has delayed the review embargo, which was actually supposed to come out today at 9 a.m. Eastern. Well, it's been delayed until just a day before the launch, again, being on September 16th. This is according to NVIDIA over on Reddit saying due to COVID delayed shipping and other issues, we've received many requests from folks asking for more time to finish the reviews of the RTX 3080 founders. So the performance embargo will be September 16th at 6 a.m. with the sale date happening in exact 24 hours from them September 17th at 6 a.m., which is when you're going to be able to officially purchase them, whether it be on Amazon or Newegg or anywhere else. But in case you want to get one in person, I don't know how much stock to take into this. Somebody just posted it on our Discord. It could be true. It could also just be complete nonsense because it's a Facebook post of somebody that I'm not just not familiar with. Best Buy is going to be your best bet to get a card on launch. I have a personal friend who works for Best Buy Corporate and they bought over 65% of the stock out buying Micro Center for the first time. Your best bet will be Best Buy for a three series, which is intriguing. Um, Micro Center confirming that they're actually not going to have any Founders Edition in retail stock on launch. So it's potential that Best Buy might be the place to go. And if you try to get it from the games build Best Buy, I'm going to have to I, I cry because I m mine mine Nvidia didn't send me a sample so I I need to buy it for I need my third series okay so that's that's what's happening and then the uh, Nvidia also coinciding announcing that the 3070 is getting launched in the exact middle of October and October 15th undercutting Nvidia or AMD's announcement of big Navi which is supposed to take place on October 28th so Nvidia all the way around just kind of changing dates but they're also changing up the tech industry potentially forever with it now being official that NVIDIA is acquiring ARM for $40 billion, or rather put it as SoftBank has agreed to the sale of ARM to NVIDIA for $40 billion, because one of the big things that's going to have to go through is all of the antitrust leg legislation in all of the various different reasons to make regions to make sure that this isn't going to violate a whole bunch of stuff. SoftBank's going to continue to have a stake in this new partnership up to 10% is where they're supposed to be. But this dropped late last night after it was confirmed that it had kind of gone through through rumors. And then you had like articles like this, if NVIDIA buys ARM, how open will it remain? Well, according to NVIDIA's own press release on this, they're really going to try to keep it open. They're going to keep all of the contracts still in place. They're really just doing this so that they can just have the IP to make their AI section a lot stronger and they can build their own SOCs and everything with uh, ARM in place but saying NVIDIA will continue ARM's open licensing model and customer neutrality and expand ARM's IP licensing portfolio with NVIDIA technology. We'll see 
how long that goes. Uh, we'll see how long NVIDIA continues to keep it open. They do not have a good track record of keeping things not proprietary. I mean, even just, can we remember back to the GeForce Partner Program, which happened just about two years ago, where NVIDIA was trying to get companies to make their gaming graphics cards NVIDIA exclusives. And if you wanted an AMD graphics card, it wasn't allowed to have any gaming branding on it whatsoever. So. They, they've done things that have been super shady as far as kind of uh, re-establishing existing structures in the past, so we could potentially see that. But NVIDIA CPUs is now a huge real thing that's going to help them to become the world leading GPU and AI technology company. This is probably going to spike up interest in RISC-V, which is another open source CPU platform, as opposed to just having Intel and AMD. Now with Nvidia coming in with ARM, this could obviously open up a ton of possibilities on so many different things, such as Nvidia phones, or which they kind of kind of half got into a little bit when it came to like their Shield tablet, they were like almost there, but this could see acceleration of things like their gaming setups, like a custom Nintendo Switch, their NVIDIA Shield TV could be even more put together because they now own ARM. And it's going to be an intriguing time to say the least. Obviously, this has a ton of regulatory hurdles to go through, just like NVIDIA had to go through when they purchased Mellanox for all of their networking stuff. But NVIDIA is really trying to get away from being a gaming graphics card company and being a full stack server provider when it comes to basically everything. And both NVIDIA and ARM's boards have already approved the acquisition and the companies expect the transaction to close within 18 months and then has to pass all the regulatory boards in the meantime of that. So what do you think of NVIDIA acquiring ARM? This is a huge deal obviously arms a big player in essentially everything that is not intel and amd whether it be your phones and apple iphones or uh being in essentially a ton of products everywhere nvidia now owning that technology is a scary future sound off in the comments down below of what you think of it and what nvidia is going to do with that and also let's talk a little bit more about nvidia's ampere technology because there's been spec listings of the upcoming rtx quadro card for the full ga102 die of the new ampere architecture showing that it's going to have 10,752 cuda cores which is slightly more than the 3090 it's going to have a slower memory bandwidth than the 3090 but it's going to have around 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM instead of 6X. So you can see how they compare here on this handy video card slide, 16 gigabits per second memory bandwidth instead of 19 and a half. But we're expecting uh, this to get announced October 5th with NVIDIA's GTC event that's taking place. And then this should just be the last little bit of NVIDIA news. There's a report coming out of Igor's lab saying that NVIDIA is binning their chips into three different tiers. You got bin zero, bin one, and bin two. Zero is an okay chip that performs as intended. Bin one is good processors, and bin two is the best quality processors that they have. Whether or not NVIDIA is going to make it so that their founders edition only have bin two, and then they give bin one and bin zero out to all of the AIB partners, and you'll find the bin zero in things such as the cheapest models that every AIB partner has to offer. We'll have to see. Uh, more than likely, that's going to be the case, even though NVIDIA hasn't really talked as much about how they're binning the stuff. But uh, you, looks like there's going to be several different stacks of chips that it's going on. So we'll see how this rolls out. We'll get verification from obviously third party sources as the review embargoes come up. But now let's talk about another buyout. NVIDIA buying ARM for $40 billion is obviously insane, but it appears that the Microsoft acquisition of TikTok has actually fallen through with Oracle now apparently winning the bid for TikTok. It's supposed to be a partnership rather than a full sale uh, in collaboration with ByteDance. Microsoft saying we're confident our proposal would have been good enough for TikTok's users but while protecting national security interests. To do this, we would have made significant changes to ensure the service met the highest standards for security security, privacy, online safety, and combating disinformation. And we made these principles clear in our August statement. We look forward to seeing how the service evolves in these important areas. It turns out that Oracle is going to be the one to be doing that. But this came after a report that ByteDance is apparently unwilling to sell the algorithm to how they actually promote content, regardless of who acquires the US arm of TikTok, which is crazy because the whole thing that actually does make TikTok run is the algorithm. So if the US company doesn't have the algorithm for how to actually promote the content. Honestly, this is just from a technological perspective. I th I'm pretty sure TikTok's useless at that point because that's kind of the platform is the algorithm. It's that's what drives the content. That's what pushes creators to actually be part of it is how it actually 
does all of that. And I don't necessarily trust Oracle or Microsoft or any other social media company to kind of replicate that because that's kind of the secret sauce. And if they would have already figured that out, they would have been a lot more successful of what they're already doing, but they're not like Facebook's reels, just not good. Okay. So why are we expecting that somebody else is going to be able to do it? This is essentially, if this is, if this is true, that ByteDance is not giving the algorithm with the sale, well, then the sales just for show and TikTok becomes a useless company at that point. That's my perspective. I don't know. What do you think of this whole TikTok drama? Go tell me down below in the comments and let's talk about the Xbox Series S drama, sort of. Turns out that because it only has 10 gigabytes of VRAM total for all of the shared system memory and gaming memory that uh, the backwards compatibility will be less than that of an Xbox One X. And instead, the uh, improvements of backwards compatibility will be on par with the One S version of the console, where it's going to have improved texture filtering, more consistent frame rates, faster load times and auto HDR, but not the 4K scaling that the One X had. So the Series S is going to be good and it's going to be better than the One S, but expect that previous Xbox games are going to be more similar to a One S than on a Series S. And then Xbox confirming that this week they are going to be raising the price on their Game Pass for PC, that it is now out of beta and in general availability, saying that the introductory price will change on the 17th and will now be $10 a month. But if you already had it, then it's not going to happen on this same billing cycle. You still pay $5, but it's going to be increasing ten dollars a month for game pass on pc honestly still a really great deal i'm totally okay with what xbox is doing here at the moment then let's talk about samsung for a second because they are having another event on september 23rd for what is going to be the s20 fan edition which is supposed to be in multiple different colors it's supposed to have the snapdragon 865 which is good 120 hertz it's supposed to be slightly cheaper I think it's hard to say what they're doing with this one and where it slots in because it's we'll find out on, on the 23rd. But we're also finding out that Samsung is apparently going to be making all of Qualcomm Snapdragon 875 chips with is this is going to make Samsung eight hundred and fifty million dollars. Apparently, TSMC just couldn't offer a sweet enough deal for Qualcomm to go with them. So Snapdragon 875 being made with Samsung and seeing as how Nvidia is having great success, at least according to their own numbers, with the RTX 30 series on Samsung's eight nanometer node. This might actually be better better than some of the rumors have been reported because there's been issues in the air of Samsung's nodes aren't as good. They're having manufacturing troubles. And then Nvidia drops the bombshell of the RTX 30 series just being absolutely phenomenal. Thanks in part due to the eight nanometer node. So we'll see how this works. And uh, Snapdragon produced by Samsung. So that means that both the Qualcomm version and the Samsung Exynos version of Samsung phones are going to be both all made by Samsung. Neat. And what's going to be made by SpaceX is the next gen prototype of the Starship. The SN8 is going to be trying a 60,000 foot return flight with a new nose cone. This is according to Elon Musk saying that the flaps and nose cone should be done in about a week. Then static fire, check out static fire, fly to 60,000 feet and back. SN8 coming fast. Space travel to Mars happening sooner than we may think. And death of the CD happened sooner than we may think. Not really, it's not dead, but vinyl is now outselling CDs since the first time since the 1980s where it accounted for 62% of physical revenue. Vinyl just, it's its its doing pretty well, which uh, isn't a huge part of total music sales, but it's definitely, it's only 4% physical sales. So uh, vinyl, are, are you guys buying vinyl? Let me know down below in the comments. And I, I wanna buy one of these. There is a rumored Sony a7C camera that's supposed to be launching on, I believe it's September 15th. It's supposed to be a full frame in a, I guess, a6500 body. It's essentially the a7 III with an articulating screen in a smaller body. Yes, yes, I'm filming this on my a7 III. Our secondary camera is the a6500. If I could get that in full frame, heck to the yes. This is supposed to be announced and it's supposed to cost around 2,100 euros for the body, which is expensive because that seems like it's more than the a7 III, but you do get the articulating lens, which is quite nice. Uh, I, I don't know, what am I gonna do? Not quite sure. And Tesla isn't quite sure which cars are theirs because according to uh, reports in Europe, the superchargers in the EU are apparently charging rival electric vehicles because it's on a standardized port there. So the 
software handshake that's supposed to allow superchargers to recognize Tesla isn't working. And since superchargers charge you because of your Tesla account and rival EVs wouldn't have that, they're charging for free. This will probably be fixed sometime soon, but what won't be fixed is the burn that the US CPB did to OnePlus. This is after the Customs and Border Protection released this press release that they seized counterfeit Apple AirPod earbuds at JFK. 2,000 counterfeit ones from Hong Kong destined for Nevada saying that these are fake AirPods. But uh, in case you can't see this image right here, these are OnePlus buds from OnePlus. Yeah, they seized fake AirPods, which are actually real products from a company that has $1.7 billion in revenue. And OnePlus USA tweeting, hey, give those back. This is either a massive troll from uh, the CBP or it is just, um, wow, this is really bad. That's that's a bad, that's a bad, they need to put out a press release saying that they're releasing these. And then lastly, let's go ahead and talk about what makes me really sad these days, besides the fact that Nvidia didn't send me any founders edition samples of their cards. Just want to cry myself to sleep about that one. My 75 inch 8K nano cell TV from LG is now obsolete with Sharp announcing a 120 inch 8K TV. This would be so much bigger. I would have to buy a new TV stand, but I kind of want one. And Sharp, yo dogs, hit. I, I will play my 3090 on this, which I'll have to buy myself because Nvidia is not sending me samples, but. <sighs> It's just, I'm here, I'm here for you. And you know who else is here for you? Today's video sponsor. Don't forget about today's video sponsor, DataCamp. Check them out at the link in the video description. Make sure data analytics is part of your skill set. Use DataCamp as a way to help you move forward with that. And I'm not here for you any longer. It's over. This, this thing that we had going on this Monday is done. I'll see you here tomorrow for Tuesday. This is gonna be a busy week. We got we got a bunch of RTX 30 series news coming out with uh, with benchmarks. We got a bunch of releases happening this week. Don't forget to come check us out at twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple to watch the Sony event this coming Wednesday uh, for the PS5. I'll see you there. Bye.